my God, guys, we've got the greatest Thursday night football game ever to break down here. So how can I not be just so excited to jump on stream here? We're going to talk about owner's box. We're going to talk about Thursday night football. We're going to talk about the main slate of NFL, and I'll answer any questions you guys have along the way as well. And like I said, just couldn't be more excited to talk about Steelers, Patriots. We've got Thursday night football, the total. It's all the way up to 30 and a half points. So a uh, robust total for this game. And if you guys do me a favor, come and like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. For every single time you guys like this video, an additional point is going to be scored on Thursday Night Football. So uh, go ahead, like the video, subscribe. And any questions you have at all for me over the course of the show, throw those into the YouTube chat, and I'll be answering them. Whether you want to talk about the NFL main slate, Thursday Night Football, or if you want to talk about bets for today and stuff that I might like from that angle, anything you want to ask me in the YouTube chat, throw that in. And I'm going to start here by building out lineups for Thursday night football for owner's box in the Sims. And if you guys haven't checked out owner's box yet, you could sign up using the link that we have below. You do get up to a $500 bonus on your first deposit when you sign up at owner's box using the link that we have. And then also if you're signed up to stochastic, which we've got tools for everything included under one NFL package, you are going to get access to the contest generator and the Sims. So you could build all your lineups for owner's box right here. And then you can also simulate them out as well. So I just built lineups for Thursday night football. And now we are about to sim them here. But let's see, what is the payout to first? So I could set it for owner's box. Payout to first for tonight. It is going to be 25% of the prize pool. So it is the default that goes to first. So let's run the contest sim, and then also main slate on owner's box. If you guys haven't played over there, one of the main benefits of it, actually my favorite thing that they have over at owner's box is that it is super flex. You get to play two quarterbacks for the main slates. So you don't have to worry about defenses or anything like that, which is great because I don't really like playing defenses in DFS all that often. So main slates on owner's box, they are super flex. What I did out here was just simulated out lineups for Thursday night football. And we have 47 is the max entries. So I'm going to favorite my top 46 lineups and we'll look at the results. 46. All right, so top lineups have been favorited. And where we'll start here is we'll look at which lineup is projected the best overall and how everything sorts in our Sims tool is by the simulated ROI. So we could also sort by fantasy points and we could see what some of the top fantasy point projected lineups look like. But first I want to look at which lineup is just projected to a return us the most money on our investment here. And that is Mitch Trubisky in the captain spot, because how could it not be? You know, Mitch Trubisky, as much as we joke, Mitch Trubisky is going to be one of the players with the highest fantasy point projections in this game, because it's it's a game that's projected for like no points in it. Mitch Trubisky, Devontae Parker, Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, and then Bailey Zappi. So actually we are getting both quarterbacks into this showdown lineup. And then we are getting to... Yeah, all pass catchers. So both quarterbacks, three wide receivers, and that is our number one overall projected lineup by Sim ROI. Pretty big gap between the top two lineups and everything else. This number over here, so we have a 128.4% Sim ROI for this top lineup. The second lineup, 115.4, and then there's a really big drop off. So we look at this lineup here. Bailey Zappi in the multiplier spot with Zeke Elliott, Hunter Henry, Mitch Trubisky, and George Pickens. So another one that's utilizing both of the quarterbacks. And let's also look by fantasy point projection. One thing you guys will see here that I think is pretty important, and one of the reasons, too, you should be using some sort of process to sort your lineups, whether it's based on simulations or something else you do. Fantasy points is just not really a great way to figure out the best lineups to play. For instance, if you go ahead and look here at the projected fantasy points, where I've got the lineups here projected by most fantasy points, th these are almost none of my top lineups. Of the ones sorted by highest fantasy points, only one of these lineups was in my top 47. Whereas if you look at simulated ROI, right, it's not all the ones that were projected for the most fantasy points. By the way, we got some people in the YouTube chat here. Chad Freeland, full room over here. Started playing Owner's Box last week. Yeah, man. I mean, pe people showing out in droves to watch. It's really because this Thursday, it's the NFL for putting this terrible game on primetime. Why every Thursday do we have to have the worst games ever to break down? We can't have the good teams playing on Thursday Night Football ever. It only has to be the worst teams in the NFL, and it always is backup quarterbacks. 
we can get a team that's healthy that plays on Thursday night football and sad act saying three likes. Yeah. Only three so far, but don't worry. More are going to come. The more we're going to get more people liking, liking the video as we go here, but we're off to a little bit of slow start. Sat. I feel you. Anyway, projected fantasy points. The lineup here that I project for the most fantasy points, it is Zeke in the captain spot with Jalen Warren, Mitch Trubisky, Deontay Johnson, and George Pickens, but it's still not one of my top lineups. I simulated ROI, and most of the ones that I were that I had project for the most fantasy points were not, and that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's based on how the players correlate with each other, which fantasy point projections aren't necessarily going to show, but the other point, too, is look at how heavily duped the lineups are that are projecting for more fantasy points. This lineup over here that we had for the highest fantasy point projection, 65.46, I've got to project to be duped 181 times in this set of lineups. So it's duped so heavily that even if it comes in first place, you're splitting with so many people that it's not really all that great of a lineup. And that is something that makes it so that we should be considering other things other than just fantasy point projections. We're building our lineups, especially for something like Showdown. Let's sort by the dupes now. And yeah, also if you see here in the dupes, most of the lineups that are expected to be heavily duped are not making it into my top overall best projected lineups. The lineup that's expected to be duped the most, it was also that lineup that I project for the most fantasy points with Zeke, Jalen Warren, Mitch Trubisky, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens. Some other ones in here that are expected to be duped pretty heavily. We've got the Zeke Elliott, Jalen Warren, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris and Bailey Zappi. So like only a couple of players away from this lineup that we built over here. And yeah, it looks Zeke is very, very popular in that multiplier captain spot tonight. Very popular. Of the most duped lineup, Zeke is in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so of these top lineups, Zeke is in the multiplier spot in all but one of them. So if you want to get different on tonight's slate, just play anybody other than Zeke in the multiplier spot. And there's a pretty good chance you're doing something a little bit different in the field. Let's look at the exposures here. Who are we getting to the most? Let's sort by just looking at our captain exposure for top lineups. Filter by captain. All right, so the captains we're getting to the most. Starts with Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren is the most rostered captain, about one-fifth of my lineups to Jalen Warren. They're 21.7%, where we have him projected here for 12.9% captain ownership. Zeke Elliott. So while Zeke does show up the second most, we are way underway to the field on him. Right, Zeke is the player who we are most underweight to in the captain because he's projected for 42.3% ownership. So over on owner bo owner's box tonight, you get you know nearly half of the field is expected to be playing Zeke in that multiplier spot, whereas my top lineups, only 17.4% of them had Zeke. So if you guys are hand-building one lineup, I think the biggest mistake you could make today is playing Zeke in that multiplier spot. Now, this isn't based on whether I think Zeke is going to have a good or a bad game. My honest opinion is that everybody's going to suck today. Everybody's going to be terrible. But... We have to consider if you win with a lineup that has Zeke in the captain spot, what does it mean for your payout relative to the other players you could be playing in the captain spot? And the reality is that even if Zeke is the highest scorer on this slate, you could win a tournament and not have the best night in the world, especially for somebody who plays a lot of lineups. Like I've, I've had slates myself where I didn't have the best system in the past for sorting my lineups based on dupes. I've come in first place on one game slates for NBA and lost money on the slate because I won a lineup that was duped really heavily. Point being, Zeke looks way over owned in the captain slash MVP spot tonight. And then everybody else, by consequence, looks close to being under owned. Mitch Trubisky is a guy who I'm a little bit underweight to the field too, but close to even 19.2% uh, projected ownership. He showed up in 15.2% of my top lineups. Where we're getting different is with Jalen Warren. Bailey Zappi, another one. And also, if you think about this logically, Zappi really does serve as good leverage off of Zeke Elliott because if the Patriots do score, and who knows, maybe they score zero points today, but let's assume they score one touchdown and it is not going to Zeke Elliott. It's Bailey Zappi throwing the ball to one of his pass catchers. Well, now not only is your lineup potentially looking good with Zappi in that multiplier spot, but you've also gotten yourself leverage off of Zeke Elliott if that is the way that the Patriots score the football, if it happens through the air as opposed to on the ground. Other players we're getting to here in the multiplier spots, mostly coming from Pittsburgh, actually. Mitch Trubisky talked about him, but then Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, George Pickens, getting exposure to all of these guys as well. Dude, the, the Jalen Warren to Najee Harris split has been extremely frustrating as of late. We do have Jalen Warren projected for more fantasy points over Najee Harris. Jalen Warren has been way more efficient this year than Harris has been. 
but Pittsburgh insists on giving Najee Harris more of the snaps and more of the touches every week, even though we hear after every single game, before every single game, the coaching staff say, Jalen Warren's going to be the guy who gets the bulk of the touches. We're going to see an increased workload for Jalen Warren, and then it never ends up happening. Once again, we're projecting for it to be Jalen Warren. The coaching staff has indicated that they want to get Jalen Warren more of the touches over Najee Harris. Let's see if it actually ends up being the case tonight. Let's look at the flex guys now. If we go ahead and now filter by players we're getting to the most in the flex. Getting to the most of Bailey Zappi overall here in about half of our lineups. A little bit overweight to the field, but that also kind of makes up for the fact that if you remember, we were... Oh, no, we're also overweight to him in the captain spot. Just overall, Bailey Zappi looks like a pretty good way to differentiate some lineups tonight. Field is not going to be massively high on him. Mitch Trubisky getting to more of him in the flex spot than in the captain spot. Zeke Elliott is somebody who, on the whole, we are underweight to. So we have him in 51% of lineups in the flex. And then what was he in the captain? We had him in 17%. So overall, about 60% of my lineups do have Zeke Elliott in them. But you also have to keep in mind that the field is correct to be playing him in 80% of their lineups according to our ownership projections. So with that being the case, there's just not all that much that we are liking from Zeke Elliott relative to what his projection is. And STX saying that uh, he meant the score total per like. Yeah, let's see what we're up to now. I'm actually, I'm going to go to the YouTube page and I'm going to refresh it. I'll like it myself because I really do think that's going to help the football game tonight. I think the scoring for the game is going to be directly correlated to how many likes this video gets. So what are we up to now? Four likes, but I'm going to give it a like right now. So we're now up to five likes, which means the final score of the football game is going to be three to two. I don't think that's an unrealistic outcome. Three to two, if we're basing the football game based on how many likes that this show gets, I think that's, I think that's a reasonable prediction that the final score is going to be three to two. Shout out to STX in the YouTube chat, though. Appreciate you for keeping tabs on how many likes we have there. Five. So let's look at some of these other players we're getting to in the flex spot because, you know, it's it's tough pickings today. And this is also kind of where it really does help to have something like the Sims tool where when all of the options look terrible, who's the least terrible looking of the terrible options? And right here, we've got as the pass catchers to pair with Mitch Trubisky, we're getting overweight to George Pickens. We're getting overweight to Deion. Oh, no, a little bit underweight to Deontay Johnson. 37% Deontay Johnson to 47.8% of Pickens. But if you look at the ownership, they're projected to be 43 and 41% owned. So if you guys are just building one lineup and you're trying to figure out which Steelers wide receiver to go to, I, I do think that we want to go to George Pickens over Deontay Johnson. While we do have Deontay Johnson projected for slightly more fantasy points, Pickens is the cheaper player. And then also, I generally view Pickens as being a higher upside player than Deontay Johnson, which also does come into play in our simulations. Chris Raptor saying after last weekend, 3-2 is possible. If there's any game, it's going to be this one. If there's any game, it's going to finish 3-2. I have to think that's probably a score that's never happened before, right? There's never been an NFL game to finish 3-2. 3-2, 2-0, all these are live scores for Thursday Night Football. How about from the Patriots side of the game? We're underweight to the field to Zeke Elliott overall, right? A little bit overweight to him in the flex spot, but well underweight to him in the captain. We're overweight to Bailey Zappi in both the captain and the flex spot. So who do we like pairing with him, right? Who can we pair with Bailey Zappi to make for a decent looking Patriots offensive game passing stack? Well, we could also get some leverage off of Zeke Elliott along the way. We're getting to Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju is in 37% of lineups, only project for 25.6% ownership. So he's somebody who makes a little bit of sense here. Hunter Henry, 32.6%. He's only in 18.2% of lineups. And I see a Chris Raptor in chat saying, look at Allen Robinson. He used to be with Mitch in Chicago in the last game he targeted him. Yeah, that is true that there's, you know, a little bit of a old longstanding rapport between Mitch Trubisky and Allen Robinson. One thing I will bring up, though, is that Allen Robinson, when he played in Chicago, was for sure one of the best wide receivers in football. And he is a little bit washed up, actually very washed up now. But I actually didn't get to any lineups with Allen Robinson. Let's see. If I went to Allen Robinson, we could always... So one thing you could always do in the Sims tool as well. So let's say you're in Chris's Chris's shoes here. And you're like, you know, I've got a feeling that Allen Robinson is going to see more targets from Mitch Trubisky given their history together. You could always go in here and artificially boost his ROI so that more, more of your lineups will populate with Allen Robinson in them. But if I'm just going by our data and the lineups I've built here... Not really getting to any of Allen Robinson. 
Uh, Tyquan Thornton, this is a contrarian play that we're getting a little bit of. He's projected for 10% ownership. He wound up in 13% of my top projected lineups. So if we're looking at the Patriots pass catchers in order that I'm getting exposure to them, it's Juju 1, Hunter Henry 2, Devontae Parker 3, Tyquan Thornton 4, and I'm overweight to all of them individually. Every single one of those Patriots pass catchers overweight to, and it's not that hard when I have less than 80% of what the field is playing in Zeke Elliott. You're just going to end up getting to any other player, and that kind of gets me overweight to the field on some of these Patriots guys. Steelers running backs, what are we getting to from this side? And actually way underweight to the field, which I don't mind this because I hate the Steelers running back situation. If our data says we don't love either of the Steelers running backs, I'm cool with being underweight to them. We got, you know, a little bit of captain exposure to each Jalen Warren and Najee Harris, but look at the ownership projected to go to these guys. Jalen Warren projects for 47% ownership. I got to him in 21.7% of my top line. If Najee Harris projects for 41.6% ownership in the flex spot, and I got to him in 23.9%. So underweight to the field to the running games on both sides and instead prioritizing getting to the passing games. Bailey Zappi, Mitch Trubisky, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster. Have yourself a game tonight, boys. Let's get a, a big, let's see, how many likes are we up to? As, as the team scored a touchdown there, are we up to seven likes? Maybe, maybe we get a, a seven-nothing game. We are up to... How many likes? Eight. All right. So maybe a 5-3 game? Can we get a 5-3 game? Can we get a, a safety, a field goal, a touchdown with a two-point conversion? Perhaps. Be above the scoring expectations for I know many of you watching. If we get an eight, eight, an, uh, a 5-3 game. Or 8 nothing, maybe. Chris Raptor said, knowing Bill, he'll make Mitch beat him by passing and not rushing. You know what's funny, though? Where it's kind of like, hey, Bill Belichick has always had this reputation of he takes the other team's best weapon away. What the hell is the Steelers' best weapon that he's going to take away today? What is it? Are you going to take Najee Harris out of the game plan? Who gives a shit? Right? You're, you're going to take you're going to take Pat Fryermuth and Mitch Trubisky out of the game plan? Who's the best weapon? Who's the, who's the guy that Bill Belichick takes away from the Steelers' offense in this game? There's no weapons to take away. They, they couldn't score. I don't know if this team could score playing 11 on 0. Take away the best weapon, though. Let's see what else I'm getting to here, if anything, really. Nothing too much of note. Some of Pat Fryermuth, but, you know, the field is getting to him 23%. I'm about even with him here. So nothing else. If you guys have any questions about Thursday Night Football, you could throw those into the chat. But I want to build out some lineups for the main slate now. And then we'll look at the exposures that I'm getting to the most of. And while these are building lineups and simming, let's look for some bets for today. This should be fun. Because any game, any, any Thursday night football game is watchable if you have some sort of rooting interest. So let's see if I look at our data over at Odd Shopper, what it is that projects well for tonight's game. Tonight, do you guys have any bets you like for tonight, by the way? Anything at all that stands out to you for Thursday night football? Here's one that projects pretty well for us. Strap in, fellas. Strap in. Juju Smith-Schuster, over 15 and a half receiving yards. The best available line is minus 115. We actually do have the fair line projected at minus 139. We have this expected to win 58% of the time. Juju Smith-Schuster, over 15 and a half receiving yards. Somebody's going to catch the ball for the Patriots. Juju's been running a bunch of routes the last couple of weeks, certainly more than he was earlier in the year. It's a low line. I know people aren't going to want to take overs on Juju at this point of the year, but 15 and a half, like at some point, the number has to be low enough to where you're willing to take it, right? 15 and a half, I think, is that number for me with Juju. What else here? Bailey Zappi is plus money to not have a passing touchdown tonight. Bailey Zappi, we have him projected with a 53% chance to score zero, to have zero passing touchdowns. All right, let's sim this here. So we got those lineups built out. We'll sim them there, and then we'll see what the exposures are afterwards. SadX wants to know, who's, the, who's realistically the safest captain? The actual safest captain is Zeke Elliott because we know he's going to get a workload. He's just too popular for tournaments. In cash, If you're playing a cash game tonight, yeah, go, go ahead and play Zeke Elliott in that multiplier spot. But what I think a lot of the field is going to want to do is just, you know, 
play Zeke because he's somebody who's going to be getting a lot of the touches. Sadak saying for single entry to cash, why well, approach those totally differently? For single entry, I like being unique and different. For cash, you just want to be chalky and play the optimal plays based on projections. But for single entry, where it's a tournament setting, you want to be building lineups that are a little bit different looking. If you want to be safe, play Zeke. If you want to play somebody who has upside and is going to be different than the field, I think that's where you go with Bailey Zappi. Because if you're getting to the Patriots passing game, you're getting leverage off of Zeke, who is number one, the most popular, and then also the player that we're projecting to be the most overwhelmed on the slate. And chalk doesn't have to be bad. You could get a player that's really chalky and is expected to have a ton of ownership, and we could still expect him to be, you know, under-owned in our projections. Because there's some times where we might look at a guy and he could be 60% owned, but our data will say, yeah, but he's going to be in the optimal lineup 80% of the time. But that's not the case with Zeke. This is a game where there's a lot of variance to be had. Honestly, this could be a game where there's only one or two touchdowns scored on the entire slate, and then it's just whoever scores that touchdown ends up being the nuts. And it might not be Zeke. It's most likely to be Zeke, but it's less likely to happen than what his ownership is, if that makes sense, Sad Axe. All right, I'm going to favorite my top 150 lineups. This is for the main slate. We'll look at which lineup projects the best, and I'll go each position, position by position, and that'll bring us to the end here, unless you guys have any additional questions for myself, I could answer those. And then uh, Sad Axe also saying, thanks for the info. Thank you for the questions. Always appreciate any engagements on the show. Top projected lineup that I have in here. Number one overall lineup I simulated ROI, Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, Zach Moss, Debo Samuel, Rashad Bateman, David Njoku, Jerry Judy, George Kittle, and Russell Wilson. So we got Brock Purdy stacked with McCaffrey, Debo, and Kittle. And then Russell Wilson was stacked with Jerry Judy in the Denver side of that stack. But now let's go to each position and we'll look at what we're getting to here, starting with the quarterbacks. So starting with QB, who are we getting to the most of here? Now, keep in mind that owner's box we're just built lineups out for, it is super flex. So you're going to see some inflated quarterback ownerships because we're playing multiple quarterbacks in some spots. So that's why these lineups are going to be north of 100% total. But we have here, getting to the most of Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy in 34% of lineups, Patrick Holmes in 30%. Then we've also got Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, and Justin Herbert. As well as Jake Browning. Jake Browning looked damn good on Monday Night Football. And I know I've kind of been crapping on primetime football games because tonight's game is so bad. But being serious, Jake Browning versus C.J. Beathard, kind of a banger on Monday Night Football. That was some of the best quarterback play we've seen in the entire year. And I'm not even saying that in like a tongue-in-cheek way to say like, oh, quarterbacks have all been terrible this year. Jake Browning looked legitimately awesome on Monday Night Football. And C.J. Beathard looked pretty solid as well. I like getting to Jake Browning this week. And I'm interested to see what kind of exposure I'm getting to Jamar Chase at wide receiver as well, because Jamar Chase also had a really big game. Let's see, Jamar Chase. Here he is. So I'm getting Jamar Chase only in 7% of lineups. Nothing crazy. He's projected for 8% ownership, so about even with the field. Wide receivers that I am prioritizing. Jalen Guyton, Brandon Ayuk, Elijah Moore, Sky Moore. These are terrible wide receivers, by the way. Keenan Allen. So I'm going to guess, what does this mean? I must be getting to a lot of like Christian McCaffrey at running back because I'm getting to some very cheap wide receivers. Keenan Allen notwithstanding. Keenan Allen's an expensive wide receiver. I think makes sense to pay up for this week. And uh, Jalen Guyton, so it looks like we're getting some double stacks with Herbert, Guyton, and uh, Keenan Allen. But I mean, Elijah Moore, Sky Moore showing up in a bunch of lineups. That's not going to make me feel totally comfortable, but I'll ultimately do whatever the data says is going to be best for any individual slate. And then getting overweight to Brandon Ayuk, getting overweight to Debo Samuel, which is going to correlate nicely with the Brock Purdy exposure we're getting to at QB. Running backs. Who are we building around at running back this weekend? Zach Moss. I know Zach Moss was disappointing last week. He's going to be popular again this week, but I'm okay going back to the well. He was on the field so much on Sunday. He didn't score a touchdown. He wasn't efficient. But if he's going to be on the field for like 80 plus percent of snaps and he's going to be getting as many touches as he did last week, that's going to lead to success more often than not for Zach Moss. So I'm going to be going back to the well with him. Other core plays at running back, Javante Williams, Zach Charbonnet, as well as Christian McCaffrey and Joe Mixon. And that really rounds out like hardly getting anything else at running back. No other running back other than these five are in more than 5% of my lineups. Mixon, McCaffrey, Charbonnet, Javante Williams, Zach Moss. Those are your cores at RB. 
I'll look at tight ends to wrap it up here, and then we'll be done for the night. By the way, if you guys haven't done yet, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget, for every like that you get, that is going to be one point that is scored on Thursday Night Football. And this is a hard and fast rule. If we get nine likes on the video, that means nine points will be scored tonight. If we get 12 likes on the video, 12. If you guys like this video 100 times, it means there's going to be 100 points scored. We're up to 11 right now, which means that we're projecting an 8-3 game. That's how Sims work. It's exact math like that. Like just looking at likes on a YouTube video and then you go, this is how many points are going to be scored. That's all the math behind it. Not, not really. But it might be for Thursday Night Football. Tight ends that I'm getting to. David and Joku. Joe Flacco, by the way, actually looked kind of decent last week. Relative to expectations, anyway. He was competent. David and Joku, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Kyle Pitts. Those are the tight ends I'm primarily getting to. A little bit of Cole Komet, although nothing all that significant. But it is uh, Travis Kelsey on the high end, a little bit of George Kittle. And if you're saving money, David and Joku is making sense for it today. So, guys, that is going to do it for me. Thank you very much for watching. If you've not done it, one more time. For every like this video gets, that is one more point scored on Thursday Night Football. If you want to sign up for the NFL package at stochastic.com, there's a link for that below, and it covers everything. You get the contest generator. You get the Sims tool. So build all your lineups on our site. Simulate them. We've also got all our player projections, ownership projections, all included in one bundle. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you possibly can, enjoy the game tonight, and I'll see you back here on the YouTube channel tomorrow. Peace out.